We've been talking about it for a year. The summer of 2019 has finally arrived. Whether it is a marathon or a sprint, we'll be here live on Free Agent Fever presented by AT&T. Former team executive and the man who is running all of our numbers, Tom Penn. From NBA.com, it is The Ash, Steve Ashburner. I'm Jared Greenberg. We've got contributors joining us from coast to coast as we monitor the situations. Less than three hours until the start, the official start of free agency 2019. Here's what we believe we know already heading into that 6 p.m. Eastern deadline. Let's begin with Kemba Walker reportedly moving from Charlotte to Boston, where he is set to sign a four-year, $140 million deal. The reports were that Charlotte was not going to offer Kemba a Supermax. Rather, they were going to offer him $160 million. But over the length of the deal, while it's more money, it would have acted been, it would have been less per year. Now Kyrie, Kemba replacing Kyrie in Boston because the reports are he's working on a negotiation to sign four years, $141 million with the Brooklyn Nets. We'll continue to monitor what goes on with Brooklyn as they may have a second max spot available. From Brooklyn to Orlando, where all-star Nick Vucevic appears to be sticking around. Four years, $100 million to keep Vuce in Mickey's hometown of Orlando to play for the Magic, who made the playoffs this past season. Late breaking word this afternoon, multiple media outlets reporting that Damian Lillard is close to reaching an extension. Four years, $196 million. Lillard still has another year left on his contract with another two years, so he'll add four more on top of that. The rumors are that Jimmy Butler, who has a lot of suitors, apparently we think, is going to be meeting with the Miami Heat. And there is a report from the Associated Press that it is Jimmy Butler's wish to play for the Miami Heat. So, wow, that is just some of the storylines we have to begin with. And the crazy part is, I mean, none of these teams could be talking to players until 6 p.m. Eastern, of course. So <laughs> none of this has actually happened yet in some fantasy world. Tom Penn, you've been in these negotiations before. Can you explain to us what, what is the difference between what's been happening and all these rumors for the last several days and what actually begins at 6 p.m. Eastern? Just gets more official at 6 p.m. Eastern. I mean, there's various levels of uh, pre-conversations going on. Let's call it that. You know, the old saying is, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. So <laughs> everybody's out there cheating the official rule. They're in contact. They're in touch. It stands to reason you can schedule a meeting, but you shouldn't be able to talk substance. And what we see leaking is pure substance. I oh mean, what all the terms are, what all the years, the, the length of the money and everything else, which just means that some are cheating more aggressively. Um, and it'll be very curious to see what shoes drop right away. Well, you know, there are people that will say when they argue that free agency should be scheduled before the draft, yep. that all those draft conversations invariably bleed into free agent discussions. You have agents talking to teams about the new players that are coming into the league. Of course, they're going to talk about some of the things that are going on with the established players and who's going to move. Count me on the list of one of those people. I'd love to see the NBA go to the NFL model and we do free agency before we do the draft, but we haven't gotten to that point yet. We're dealing with what we have here. Now, wait a minute, why? Because this offseason is so un 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 unentertaining, <laughs> boring? I mean, well, I, the way it works yeah. is pretty darn interesting, I sure. think. Oh, I no, no, it's not, not for lack of interest. Wouldn't I, you want to draft into need right. once you know who's with or, with, or gone from I would, team? but I also want the rhythm of what we have with the Summer League and the ability to get those rookie deals done first. And let's face it, a lot of the free agent maneuvering that goes around with cap space involves the draft picks first. So it's better to get that part out of the way first. Well, interesting. Yeah, I think there's a lot of debate about it. Uh, and, and we've seen from Adam Silver, the commissioner of the league, he's not a traditionalist by any means. He does what he right. believes is best for the league. But let, let's talk about these, these big names that we're waiting. Some of the dominoes have be, begun to fall, but of the biggest names, whether it's Kawhi or Durant, which one, Ash, do you think will be the first domino of these giants to announce where he is going. It's a tough choice. Um, I would think Durant only because of his injury situation. Um, you know, to me, I, we've all understood that it's not going to limit his market in terms of 
you know, teams that are willing to bring him in, sign him for top dollar, and give him a redshirt season. But, you know, maybe that expedites things, uh, keeps Golden State in play in a way that maybe it wouldn't have been. I guess I just, my hunch is Durant. He, he's still the big dog, even in spite of the Achilles. I think it's Durant plus who. If he can work one of these arrangements with a Kawhi or more likely with Kyrie, then maybe they go together. That's what's so curious about this. If you've got Kyrie ready to commit to Brooklyn, mm-hmm. and then it's KD come with Kyrie, that could be a bang, bang, done, done. I don't think Kawhi is in the business of cutting a deal with right. KD right away. I think Kawhi is his own thing and everything else will follow. So I agree with you. Durant's the swing in a lot of this because it could dictate where someone else goes. And, of course, the Knicks seem on the outside looking in because they're sitting there with enough to do the Kyrie KD or the Kawhi KD, but that's not going to happen. Right. So should those three teams that we focus in on, Tom, in terms of if we're looking to pair a quote-unquote foundation of a super team together be the Nets, the Knicks, and the Clippers? Yep. Well, I think all of them have the realistic, quick way to get double max cap room. The Knicks have it right now. Mm -hmm. The Nets can easily do it if they're willing to part with D'Angelo Russell. And the tricky one is the Clippers, because the Clippers, if they're going to go after Durant plus somebody else, are going to need to move Danilo Gallinari somewhere uh, in a trade arrangement or waive him which is more unlikely. I think they can find a home for him. So some work needs to get done. Mm -hmm. And what's relevant is as you sit with Kevin Durant and explain how you're going to do this, you have to demonstrate to his agent that it can happen like that. It will happen for sure to remove all the risk. Mm -hmm. Well, there have been a lot of reports. And if you're on NBA Twitter, first of all, your cell phone battery is dying. And and second of all, your head is spinning because so many of these reports come from credible reporters, but oftentimes they contradict themselves uh, with these different reports that we're reading. And and as we try and keep track of them, it's, you know, the last couple of days we have heard that a report that that Kevin Durant and Kawhi Leonard have had a conversation, right? And, And the Athletic reported Frank Isola had the other day that the first meeting for Kevin, uh, for Kawhi Leonard will be with the Clippers, but that won't come till Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, the information can conflict because you've got different people putting it out there with different agendas. Yeah. And as we get closer to the uh, starting gun here, uh, there's, there's going to be a desperation because deals are going to get struck, agreements at least, you know, made, and uh, all of a sudden money's going to seem to dry up, opportunities are going to dry up, and you're going to have teams, you know, uh, reports of teams being interested, not interested, um, coming from various agents that are working for their clients. And these, these, the agenda word is, is a key word here, right? Because the, the agents have a much different agenda than a team executive would have, but yet everyone is leaking this information. And the amount of information that's being leaked is, is just, it's ridiculous at this yeah. point. It just goes up and up and up. I mean, yeah. long gone are the days where we just get surprised when something actually gets announced. So, so do you, in that vein, is there no chance we're surprised by anything here over the next few days? Well, you know what? Tobias Harris, I saw a tweet a couple days ago where he has told his people he wants everything hushed up. Yeah. He doesn't want his meetings known. He doesn't want any speculation out there, at least from his people. Now, that doesn't say that some conflict or competing agent player or team wouldn't put something out there. But he seems like he's trying to do it the old-fashioned way. But- Go ahead. I still think we'll see surprises yeah. because I think we tend to believe all these tweets as we right. see them. They must be credible, and they're not all right for sure. Right. You pointed out the conflicts that exist, but we tend to glob onto something and assume that's the direction it's going. But there could very well be significant surprises, and that's the fun of it. Let me, let me quickly get you, before we go to some other news here, on the Jimmy Butler situation here where, again, conflicting reports. We have the situation where Philly we're hearing wants to keep Jimmy Butler. Houston wants Jimmy Butler, but the only way they could get him is by way of a sign and trade, which Philly would have to sign off on. Mm -hmm. Then the reports today from the AP that Jimmy Butler may have an interest in going to Miami and he's going to meet with them. What what do you think the scenarios are here for Jimmy Butler? Well, the Miami scenario is a sign and trade scenario as well. So Philly could keep him using the space that they have and using his veteran exception where they can always re-sign their own guy. The other two teams have to convince Philly that what they're giving back to them is better than what they get in Jimmy Butler. And the way these things usually work 
is a guy like Jimmy Butler at 21 a game and all that st all the stat stuffer that he is will just send the message to Philly, I'm leaving. I'll go to Sacramento, I'll go to Phoenix, I'll go to one of these places for nothing and you're gonna get blanked. And then Philly goes, uh-oh, I don't wanna get blanked. What can I do via sign and trade? So the free agent declares he's gonna leave or Philly really decides they don't want him. And then Houston and Miami are both now in a three-way discussion where they try to say, Goran Dragic from Miami is a better fit for you, Philly, or uh, whoever Houston's going to send them. Sure. Huh. Well, I think, I think Miami makes a lot of sense for Jimmy Butler. I think it would appeal to Jimmy Butler. It, it's um, yeah. the opportunity for Jimmy to go in there and be the guy. And I think that's been very important to him. I've ba I'm based in Chicago. I've seen his ascendancy yep. to where he went from the number 30 pick, you know, a, a neglected rookie to the man in the Bulls locker room to the point that he alienated some teammates. Mm -hmm. And I think that he's had the friction there. He had the friction in Minnesota. Philadelphia, you hear various things about the dynamic with Jimmy and the coaching staff. If, if they could do things differently, maybe they don't necessarily want to keep him, but they don't want to lose him for nothing. Yeah, I, I agree with you on Jimmy as far as he strikes me as he doesn't want the he wasn't doesn't want a Batman Robin situation right away. He'd rather go be Superman down there and then go recruit somebody next year because the Pat Riley plan likely involves keeping his powder dry and having a lot of flexibility for next summer. Because if you look at their books now, they have deals that are expiring and they'll have flexibility. And Pat is all about getting greatness. We all remember that right. from when he brought the big three together. He would like to get multiple all-star, multiple MVP candidates together because he knows that's what it takes. And for him to sequence the timing of this, it's curious if he wants to go get Jimmy Butler now and then try to get another one next summer. It feels like Jimmy's the right match for that. Yeah. And I like Dragic going back to Philadelphia. I think he's what they need. Okay, let, let, let's address something here that, that is starting to develop. We've been hearing a lot more about sign and trades, and Adrian Wojnarowski from ESPN is, is currently putting out there that Boston is looking into making this Kyrie Kemba turn into a swap, but also add in Charlotte to the mix where Terry Rozier would go to Charlotte. Now, let's talk very specifically here about the whole sign and trade process. The way the new CBA was written, and correct me if I'm off on this, was to try and provide prevent the sign and trade from being as attractive as it used to be and I don't believe we've ever had a three team sign and trade particularly since the new CBA has been put into play. You know, in the old days you could do a sign and trade and give the player the same deal he would get if he signed with you. You give that extra fifth year. Right. Well that went away so at least the money's the same for the player. Now that all these teams have worked their way back up to being up against the salary cap there's a real advantage to a team signing and trading away because they get something back in return instead of getting blanked. It, and it could be just a trade exception that they get. So in other words, if you send out a $30 million salary and you don't replace with anything, you at least have a $30 million slot available for a calendar year. So that's worth it in and of itself because it's like having tradable cap space for the future. But to your point, as soon as you start talking about a three-way sign and trade with multiple yeah. things, it just gets so much more complicated and convoluted. Those are better for the Twitterverse. They're harder to do in reality when you have to accommodate each side in each of those trades and then put them all together. Ash? I never liked the sign and trades. I mean, I always think back to the big one, Carmelo Anthony. Right. All right. And when he got to New York, that team had been so denuded of talent because of the sign and trade that – he didn't have enough to work with. So unless you're simply going to swap out, and in this case it sounds like it would be point guard, point guard, point guard, that makes sense because you're immediately replacing. But if you strip away other talent, it, it defeats the purpose of why a lot of free agents switch teams, which is to go somewhere competitive. The marathon has begun. We do have some news flying in of some smaller deals and what is happening with those big fish that are out there in the sea. We'll go live to Sean Powell for the latest on what the Lakers and Clippers are thinking. Is Kawhi headed to L.A.? And if so, which team? The free agent frenzy continues next.